Hi there, I'm Dr. Albert Chung and welcome to your friendly proctologist. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Wherever you are in the world, I hope that you're dealing the best that you can. And just know that you're also not the only one. Everyone is here because we all have questions. We want to learn and we want to get better. The question is for today. I have grade one hemorrhoids. What can I do to make sure they don't get worse? And that's an excellent question. Um, before we get there, please like and subscribe the video. It greatly helps the mission to give you useful, helpful, and real information. So let's do a little backtrack with this question because I think the bigger question surrounding this is, is there a way that I can never have issues with hemorrhoids? Can I stay away from hemorrhoid problems for my entire life? I mean, grade one hemorrhoids is a very specific diagnosis. It's, you know, just slightly enlarged hemorrhoids. And so, of course, at grade one, they're not going to be as severe as something like grade three or four. But I think the person is asking, I just want to make sure that I take care of my body. And I think that's a great um, way to prevent issues and getting to the stages where you may need hemorrhoid surgery in the future. We all don't want to be there, but that's what I think this person is asking. And so we want to know, well, how do you know you have hemorrhoids in the first place? What's the first signs that may come up that may bring you bring that concern to your attention, right? Because um, we don't get our butts checked out at the doctor's office when you go in for your regular checkup. I mean, it's only when you have a problem, that's when the doctor say, okay, well, let's look at your anus. Let's look at your bottom end. So we all know the major things, but in general, if you feel pain in your bottom end, if you have swelling, things like fullness in your bottom end, that's another sign you may have some anal hemorrhoid issues or anal fissure issues, something going on. Of course, bleeding, it's usually bright red blood and could be on your tissue paper. It could be over your, to your stool and it could be in your toilet bowl water, right? And one drop of blood from your bottom end can make your entire toilet bowl red. And so it, sometimes you may think you bled a ton, but it may have just been one or two drops of blood. But it's pretty dramatic nonetheless. And of course, does it mean that, you, that it's no way cancer? No, I'm playing the odds here, okay? If you're a healthy person with, uh, and you get your medical checkups, the odds are this being cancer is low. Because hemorrhoids and anal fissures, way more common than colon, rectal, anal cancers, okay? So, let's say you have one of those symptoms, okay? And if you don't have things that are popping out of your bottom or things you have to push up in there, then most likely you have something like grade 1 or small grade 2 hemorrhoids, something of that nature. And I don't think you need to rush to the doctor to get some treatment done, okay? Not saying it's a bad idea, but it's not necessary to, okay? Um, true, someone may ask, well, can't they do a banding if they see something? Yes, they sure could. And, you know, it's your decision after discussing the pros and cons of a banding procedure or any procedure to get it done. And yes, you may even feel some difference or improvement from there. But, um, so that's one option, okay? Go to the doctor, go to a specialist like me, and see if a banding could be done for you to make your hemorrhoids that, that are, you know, if there's any big one in there, make it gone. What's some other ways? Well, no matter what, your habit needs to be looked at. And what habits? Well, the habits that create your poop. So what you're eating. If you're taking any stool softeners, are you taking fiber, okay? Are you sitting on the toilet for a really long time? Okay, so if we break these habits down, number one thing is what you're putting in your mouth. You may wanna see if you have too much fiber, and I have a bunch of videos on the negative side effects of fiber. 
So you may need to bring that down. Maybe you want to bring and integrate some low residue foods, low fiber foods, and that low residue, low fiber can soften up your poop, make it smaller, and therefore make it easier to poop. Okay, so that's number three is stool softening agents. You know, I'm a person that likes to work around people's quality of life, current existing habits, because you disrupt things, you tell people what to do, they're not going to stick with it. It's not going to happen, especially if you have small hemorrhoids and you just don't, you may not see that there's an urgency to change things. Yeah, if your hemorrhoids are huge, you may be more willing to uproot your lifestyle. But anyway, stool softening like Colace or Miralax, okay? And I suggest you use your physician's recommendations and make sure these medications are suitable for any medical conditions you have. But those, if you need links helpful to places to find them, go ahead and look in the description box. It helps the channel out and I appreciate you for that. What's some other things? Well, toilet habits, like I mentioned. So when you get on the toilet, what are you doing? Are you, are you doing things that make them more mad? So I always say five to 10 minutes on the toilet bowl sitting from beginning to end, and that should be the maximum. The less time you spend on the toilet, the better. Why? Because the blood is constantly rushing down to your bottom end, and you just don't want to get things all swollen down there, because then if any poop passes by there, you may injure your hemorrhoids and cause bleeding. What's another one is you want don't want to be straining, right? Your eyes are popping out of your head. A little bit of pushing is normal, but if you're pushing that hard, it may be, well, it, the, the reasons why should be evaluated. Is it because your stools are so big? Is it because your stools are hard? Is there because a muscle issue where you're not relaxing or you're trying to fight against something? And many people feel like they're fighting against a blockage. And these kind of things need to be evaluated by a specialist so that you can get understanding and therefore be on your way to recovery. Okay. And all these things are things I always discuss with patients because whether you have surgery or not, whether your hemorrhoids are big or small, your habits need to be fine-tuned so that your stools can be soft 95% of the time. And then when you're on the toilet, you're being nice to your bottom end. Remember, you're being friends with your hemorrhoids. That's the whole idea. And if you can achieve these things, which it takes time, takes fine tuning and practice with some upsets till you get to your final plan. If you can do these things, your hemorrhoids stay quiet. You don't see them complaining with blood or something like that or pain. And then you can, you're doing the best you can by not getting your hemorrhoid grade one progress to a grade anything else. All right. And this, these rules really, or these guidelines can really be used for any size of hemorrhoids, right? Because it's not like it's, oh, I have grade three hemorrhoids. Doctor told me in the office today, shoot, my life is over. I screwed up. It's not the way, it's not the case at all. Because there are many people who live day to day with grade three hemorrhoids. And I'll tell you, they still live happy lives. And their hemorrhoids, you know, they notice them, but they don't have to be painful. They don't have to destroy their lives. You know, it's not like, oh, I can't, I can't go out. You know, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I, I, you know, these cause issues where I, I can't be in public. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be that severe. But I think this question is great because if you want to get proactive, you want to start your habits before they become issues. You know, you recognize something might be wrong. I may need to fix something, I may need to change something. And I think that's an excellent start to getting better bottom end health and getting your future to be less cluttered with hemorrhoid issues, right? Um, and I think that's, that's an excellent way. You know, we should all be proactive about our health, right? And that's the idea is to live a high quality of life. Being able to do what you want to do anytime, anywhere, right? Without our, without our bodies complaining that something is not right. 
Well, I hope that this video was helpful to you and I hope it wasn't too long. Let me see what the video, I'm not sure. But <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. Please check out the description box for any other details and services like video consultations. And I thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.